let's talk about container images. I'll start off by creating a Docker file so I can edit that. You don't have to name it Docker file. It can be anything else. It's just easier with the defaults later on. The standard way is to base the image on a known Linux distro like Ubuntu. Copy the entire working deer to a work deer on the image. This is, by the way, not a good practice. For many reasons you can think of, you just don't want your entire directory mounted to the container that's running in production. You can expose stuff, leak things you didn't mean to, so not a good idea. Lastly, we want to add the command that triggers or starts the process. And in my case, that's going to be go run main, but I'm just using it as default and we'll improve that later. So the first improvement here is to use a dedicated image. In my case, that's going to be Golang and Golang has an official release, so I'm going to use that. After building the image, I'll run docker inspect to understand the layers, the commands, the size of the image, which by the way here is 150 megabytes. This is a large container by any scale, so I'm sure we can do better. Let's search for existing Golang images. There's nothing really interesting in these results and there seem to be only one. So I'll check out the available tags on the official repo on Docker Hub. I highly recommend doing that with every image you use. My go-to with images I'm looking for, their tags, I'm trying to find the slim ones or ones that are based on uh, Alpine Linux. And there seem to be a lot of these here. So I'm going to pick one of them and see how I can incorporate it into my container. And let's see how the size drops after using one of the Alpine tags. Instead of using one of the specific ones that have RC in the name, that by the way stands for a release candidate, I'm going to pick the latest Alpine release of the Golang official image. And it seems to be a lot smaller than the normal one. So let's see how big it actually is. 350 megabytes. That's a drop of 50% more or less than the one we used earlier. So let's try building with that and see how big the image ends up. By the way, I'm using Docker commands here just for convenience. Any other runtime and tools should work. I'm personally transitioning slowly into NerdCTL, but that's on a different video. So it seems like we have a 360 image size and that's not bad at all, but I think we can still do better. Let's start by building a multi-stage Docker file. This lets us have reproducible build processes, kind of like a mini CI that follows the image everywhere it goes. So I call the first image a builder so I can use it later. I add a build command and underneath that I'll start another Docker file, but this time I'll only take the Alpine Linux, knowing that I'm only copying a binary that's the artifact of what I previously built and it doesn't need any external support. So I'm doing that with the dash dash from flag. So the next step would be to replace my actual command that starts the process. Remember, I've already built a binary and right, I'm using Go, but it's relevant to any other language. We just copy the artifact and we trigger that. In my case, I'm building something that's called tool or some other name. So my command is just triggering that. So let's tidy up the file and see how big it really is. So I'll build with a different tag just for a comparison. And after a small build, I can run the container and see that what I'm expecting, the help command from my tool actually works. So let's view the images and grab for SSMX, which is what I've named it. And you can see something interesting. Testing SSMX is now 25 megabytes. That's an incredible improvement. If you remember, we started off in 850 megabytes, dropped down to 300 and something, and now we're at 25. But still, we can do a little bit better. So let's move to getting to know Scratch. Scratch is a completely empty layer that you can base your Docker file on. It exists in the official docs. You can view them, I'll add them in the description. So I'm building the same container, but this time based on Scratch. There's literally nothing there. No shell, no nothing. I'm going to test it just to see if it runs. So I'm running the scratch tag and you can see it works just as it used to work before. So let's view the images and see how big it is now. 17.7 megabytes. That's over 30% improvement from our 25. I want to show you what it actually means that the image is empty to begin with. So I'm adding an entry point and running an interactive shell to try and attach myself to either sh or bash and you can see that it just doesn't exist this also means it's much more secure because if your image is compromised or your environment 
is attacked by someone they literally don't have anything to attach themselves into so that works with my previously built tag but you can see that anything that's built on top of scratch just doesn't have it Lastly, I want to explore another option, which is an exciting project from the Cloud Native Foundation. It's not necessarily lighter, but it is much, much easier to apply and produces the be best practices images that you can safely deploy to production with confidence. And the best part of it, you don't need to write a Docker file. So the project, as you can see, is called Build Packs. You can check the documentation yourself. But the exciting part about it is that it has an automatic way of identifying your repository and the files in it. For example, if you have a package.json, it understands it runs in the context of a Node.js application. In my case, that's going to be obviously a golang blaze code. So I'm going to run pack build, give it a name and just see the magic happens. It's pretty long, so I fast forwarded here, but at the end, I'm just getting a container ready to go. And there it is, it's ready, it took four minutes to build, but see the image. It has something quirky about it with the 43 years ago as a timestamp, but you gotta be honest, 42 megabytes without ever writing a Docker file is pretty neat. That's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed my, by the way, newly lubed HHKB and the O-rings I've added to its keys. So happy you stayed that long. Feel free to leave any comments, like the video and subscribe. Bye-bye.